Thank you for joining us today to see the firm directory's latest innovations and get a sneak peek of the future. My name is Rachel Snyder and I'll serve as today's moderator. Today's webinar will be hosted by Jason Noble, General Manager for Product Development. Jason's been building and managing complex mission critical applications for the past 15 years and spent 10 years focused on collaboration software for DARPA, U.S. Navy, and many Fortune 500 companies and countless small businesses. We're lucky to have Jason with us today, who will be joined by Tom Baldwin, Chief Information Officer of Cadwalder, Wickersham & Taft. Tom helped success technology tools that increase efficiency, streamline processes, and improve productivity. As former CKO at Reed Smith, he was named the 2005 Legal IT Innovator of the Year by the Legal IT Forum and was featured on the cover of the November-December 2005 issue of the Law Firm Inc. magazine. Welcome to both of you gentlemen. Jason, please take it away. Okay, so the agenda for today's webinar is that we're going to introduce you to the firm directory for those that have not seen it. We'll keep this very brief and to the point. Then we'll talk about what's coming both in our, our fall release, which is slated for October 31st, our winter release, which is a mid-December release, and then finally what's on our roadmap. So with that, let's go ahead and start with an introduction um, to the firm directory. So the firm directory really is an expertise uh, collection and identification system. It allows you to create very rich profiles that allow you to identify experts based on their various industries, their sectors, their areas of law. We have a really nice skills and expertise capability that allows people to self-declare and self-rate based on skills. And what we're starting to find is that it's becoming very popular in the business development um, side of the house for our um, client firms. Basically what they're using this as is a tool for identifying the folks that can help them go after particular pursuits as well as, as increasing um, the impact that partner lateral moves have on the firm. So the way that we do this is imagine that a new partner comes onto the firm um, what information do you know about them at that moment in time and how do you disseminate that to the firm across the board? Well, that's what the firm directory is really meant to do. You collect the information about the new partner, um, you collect their, their skills, their practices, their um, past um, matter experience, and you make that accessible and consumable in a very nice profile, very much like an internally focused LinkedIn poll. So, I'm going to go ahead and launch this particular poll. And if you can just fill this out and uh, give us an idea as to, to what are some of the challenges that you have in finding experience in your firm. And the way that we broke this down is that um, either you have no challenges or maybe you have too many systems, maybe the information is incorrect, or maybe your culture is just uh, challenging. On top of that, we can sit on top of SharePoint. So if you use SharePoint as your intranet, we can leverage that and just enhance your existing profiles to include these very rich um, sections and skills and expertise capability. And obviously we're integrated with Active Directory so it's all secure. And then finally we have a quick start for Recommind Decisive Search which means that if you have Recommind, the firm directory can be leveraged as a data source um, so that when you do a search for um, experience within Recommind, profile information comes back within those search results. And then of course the solution is very configurable so if you want to have new sections or, or remove sections from what comes out of the box you're in control of that. So just to, to highlight some of the key features of the firm directory, so first and foremost everyone within the, the firm will have a profile and we collect some of the common things that you might have in your current firm directory around um, biography information, employment history information, bar admissions, court affiliations, but we also do some really interesting things with skills and we, we, we have a very rich skills taxonomy um, that is part of the firm directory, but you're in control of that taxonomy as well. And there's actually, there's an approval workflow where, where people can suggest that a skill gets added to the system and then a practice leader or, or an individual responsible for the taxonomy itself has the opportunity to approve that. We can all we can also collect other pieces of information, things like board memberships and volunteering and causes and billing rates. So a lot of different options in terms of what can be in the profile. And you know, one of the interesting things that uh, when we were looking at bringing this product in, 
in, I've used Recommind in my prior firm, and we're rolling it out here. Um, th there's something to be said for having a, a self-declarative system for skills and experience, especially with the amount of lateral hiring that most firms now do. Even if you have made the investment in something like Recommind, laterals are sort of penalized in that kind of system where you don't have you know, 10 or 20 years of work product um, sitting in your DMS for it to crawl. You don't have 10 or 20 years of time notes. Um, you really, all you have is their bio to go on. And so this, this is really, um, from our perspective, from a, from a skills and experience strategy, a, a very good supplementation to what you'd use in addition to recommend. It certainly doesn't replace it, uh, although you, you, could, you theoretically could use it as a standalone system. But we're anticipating just folding this system in as one of another sources that recommend will eventually crawl. Perfect. Thanks. Okay, so drilling a little bit into the skills capability, uh, what you're looking at here is, is how the skills look on the profile itself. So first, in, first you can self-declare that you know that you have a skill, uh, for example, bankruptcy litigation. And what we're finding is that the vast majority of the time there's either an assistant or some kind of a delegate that will input this information on behalf of the attorneys and the partners. But let's... Um, um, assume that someone has come in here and they've, they've self-declared a particular skill. Now there's, there are a few pieces of information to, to show here. The first is that um, uh, first they've self-declared that, but they've also rated themselves as advanced. And so feedback we were getting from our first version where we did not have self-rating was that folks are going in and they're self-declaring just a massive number of skills. So we wanted to add an additional step where not only can they self-declare, but they can also self-rate. Again, this is one of those features that you can turn off, but it is a, a nice way to kind of prune down the, the skills that people are self-declaring or actually giving them the opportunity to say, hey, you know, I've worked on one matter related to this particular skill, so I'm going to limit my, my self-rating. You can also appoint individuals as experts, as denoted by this solid star. The appointing of experts is limited to um, certain individuals controlled through an administrative panel. So uh, a group of individuals can go in and say that Chris Gray, for example, is an expert in bankruptcy litigation. Again, it's all under your control, though. You know, and one of the things that I found in building these out is that it's, it's really hard if any of you have tried to do any kind of skills taxonomy or experience taxonomy. It's pretty tough to do um, across the firm. And, and one of the things that was kind of nice is that um, you guys ship with, I think it's like 1,800 nodes of taxonomy for a variety of different practice areas. So while we certainly don't think any of those are remotely turnkey for us, what they do provide is a great starting point for having that discussion with each practice group as we you know, go group by group to build out the taxonomy that's important to them. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, and we what we can do during the implementation is we give you the this Excel document essentially that has all the taxonomy nodes in it. And at least like Tom said, it's a starting point for you. And then you can ship that back to us and we'll help you load it up into um, into the system itself. All right, so so now you have these profiles and you've collected all this information, you've talked to your back-end systems, you've integrated. So it's really what we wanted to provide was a way to find experts and get answers. So this is an example of our, of our um, search experience. You'll notice the center portion of the screen is really dedicated to the search results. And what's nice here is that you can, you can put a profile, like a micro profile, right on the search results. So, it, it's nice that you can go to their full, full profile, but if you're in that search mode, really you just want the information that, that gets you to the answer quickly. On the left-hand side, you'll notice that there are some filters here. So these filters are customizable, and I will demonstrate this here in a minute. Um, but you're in control of, of what pieces of information people are able to, to filter based on. We also have a capability of system generating um, what we call as badges. So these can be integrated with your back-end systems, things like your time and billing system, so that when people put their time in um, at the appropriate time, they can be generated, a, a system award can be generated for them. Um, so in past experience, an example of one of these system generated um, badges could be 
if they filled out maybe a matter profile that kind of is the case study for a matter, you can automatically award them a badge that says that they've actually created that particular uh, matter profile. Again, this is a capability that is optional. Some firms are very excited about this for, from a cultural perspective. Some firms kind of think that there might be a culture clash, but it is something that, that's available to you. And also, all of this profile information is available on uh, your mobile devices. So we have native iOS and Android mobile apps. But we also have a, uh, a mobile web application, which simply means that any device with a web browser can come to um, the firm directory, do searches, they can filter, they can get to people's profiles, they can actually click to call. Um, the nice thing about what's being shown here on the, on the right-hand side is that you can customize what information is shown on the mobile profile um, differently than what's shown on the web profile. So maybe you want to have their location information or their industry experience, you can publish that out onto uh, your mobile devices. Getting back to um, our system integration points, it's really, it's it's very important for us that, that our SharePoint integration is very, very tight. We know many firms have SharePoint, and it's, it is the, one of the core collaboration platforms. So we wanted to make sure that our experience was very, very close to our, our web-based um, interface. So we add profiles and skills and endorsements, uh, bar admissions, court affiliations, all to the SharePoint profile, which ultimately is searchable within the context of your SharePoint um, environment. And what this means is that if you're using, whether it's the out-of-the-box search provider or maybe you purchase a third-party search provider, we put content into the SharePoint profile that is then searchable. So I previously showed you our, our, our experience finder. This is an example of what an experience finder could look like inside of SharePoint. Again, it's, this is out of the box um, user experience. Uh, if you wanted to design it and, and, and make it more specific to your firm, you're absolutely able to do that. So the same capabilities here exist on the left-hand side, the ability to filter. And then we provide you with what's known as a hover panel that gives you that snapshot information into their profile itself. As it relates to the, the, the out-of-the-box web profile, you're in control of the sections that are, are, are part of um, each one of these profiles. So we ship with biography, employment history, skills, court affiliations, bar admissions, uh, we have uh, key clients, billing rates, but if you wanted to add a new section, maybe for speaking engagements, public appearances, um, publications, you can do that. You can define your own sections and drop those into uh, the profile designer itself. So that was just a, a very, very quick introduction, get you up to speed on what the firm directory currently is. Now what I want to do is I want to talk about what's coming in our October 31st release, which is what we call our fall release. We're introducing this concept that we call an experience finder. And this is a, a self-declared experience finder or an or a, a experience finder based on information that's inside of maybe your HR systems. Not to be confused with maybe what you have in, in a RecaMind or something like that where it's, it's searching document content. This is more about the profile information. So I will demonstrate this here in a minute, but this is just to, to reiterate that you're in complete control over what content shows up on each one of these search results and also which filters are available. We're also introducing an office map capability, and this is really just the opportunity for you to come in and, and if you're at a particular location that maybe you haven't visited before but you know you have to meet with Chris Gray, you can actually look him up in the firm directory and navigate to uh, his profile, click on his location, and it will actually show you um, um, where he's located within, within a, a particular floor uh, at that location. We also spend a lot of time working on how data gets in, so we support Active Directory. We also support uh, the ability to import from a, a CSV file. So we know that this information could be available in, in various systems, so we wanted to make sure we gave you the, the ability to import that easily. And then finally in this release, we are introducing the ability to uh, provide profile printing. 
this was actually based um, on feedback from one of our, our early adopters that their, their culture was one of kind of this ba paper-based culture where um, folks might not go into the firm directory and update their profiles, but if you print it out and you say, hey, this is what your profile looks like on the firm directory, do you agree with this? You can sit down with them and actually do the markup on a, on a physical piece of paper as opposed to, to digitally. Obviously, that's an extra step, but it does fit more into um, the culture of, of this particular firm and, and potentially your firm. Now, where what we can also do with this is if you wanted to have a, a, a client-ready um, printed copy um, of the bio, you can do that as well. And that's why we added the, we give you the opportunity to pick and choose which sections you want to include in your print preview, or in your print, I should say, um, so that eventually this could actually be a, something that you provided to a client. I'm going to double check the questions just to make sure that there's no um, technical issues that we might be having. Nope. Okay, that's good. Make sure there are no comments. Okay, good. Okay, so what I'll do right now is I'll go ahead and jump into a demonstration. And I wanted to highlight the search capability, the new experience finder. So the first thing that we've added is a, a quick find, which basically when you type any term, inside of this, this uh, quick find area, it will return to you a, a series of, of um, results. Now, these folks are being returned because their location is New York, but if they had, um, for example, a, a bar admission in um, New York, those folks would be returned as well. You have the opportunity to customize what is displayed in the quick search. So you see that we have the, the person's name, we have their title, and then we have their primary um, phone number. If you wanted to have email address in there, you could do that as well. So you're in control of that. So if I hit enter, this will take us into our, um, our search result page. So again, just to, to um, reiterate, the center portion of the, of the screen, or the right-hand side of the screen, I should say, is, is really meant to give you the answer that you're looking for without having to drill into the profile itself. Now when you do a search, um, more than likely you'll want to refine that search. So let's say that I, I wanted to find um, individuals that have uh, experience in inversions, for example. I can find um, all of the people that have self-declared that they know about corporate inversions. Now, maybe I, I'm, I'm looking for very, very specific experience, maybe in healthcare. So I can select healthcare, and that further refines the result set. And then I want to make sure that they can practice in um, New York. So I can select that, and what, what you're seeing are these are, the, these are the two people within the firm that have all of those specific uh, criteria elements met. Now, if your firm is um, interested in education experience, for example, we're only displaying bar admissions and industry um, content here, an administrator can come in and actually customize what the result set looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the configuration option and just show you how easily we can add um, education to the search result. And now you'll notice that um, the educate, their education information shows up as well. So you're in, in control of what content is displayed here on this, this right-hand side. Similarly, you're in control of what pieces of information they can filter by. We have it set up here so that you can filter on industries, bar admissions, court affiliations, education, uh, and board memberships, and then finally skills. But let's say that, that you... Um, we're not interested in filtering based on education. You can just simply remove that. Uh, you can also change the ordering of these uh, particular uh, search terms. So if you think that um, bar admissions is the, the element that people will most likely filter on, you're, you have that option as well. So I'll go ahead and close this out and show you how those filters have changed here on the right-hand side. Now, th this is kind of a, of a technical thing, but what you're able to do, so if, you, if you're that, that person that receives the email that, hey, who knows about corporate inversions in healthcare, what you can do um, as kind of an intermediate step, step to getting them to, to fully adopt the firm directory is you can actually copy this, this URL 
copy it and send it to them and say, hey, click here, and it'll literally do the search terms, specific search terms that you've done, right? So you can share this URL and this, this search set to other individuals. So that's a preview of the experience finder. Next thing that I want to demonstrate here is the, the office map. I think this is a pretty quick demonstration, so I'm going to go ahead and go into um, Chris Gray's profile. And I'm just going to go and hover over his location and just show you that, yes, Chris Gray is in room 602 um, on this particular floor. Now, as I mentioned, there is a, a pretty sophisticated um, administration section that allows you to manage, thing, manage buildings and floors and all the way down to the room level. But if I select a particular building and a, and a specific floor, you can see this is, this is where that information is defined. So you upload the images, your, your floor maps, and then you define the rooms um, that are on that particular floor. So next I'll uh, move on to the print preview capability. So I'll go to Chris Gray's profile again. And here we have this, this print capability that allows you to pick and choose which sections um, you want to, to print. So if I was sharing this with a client, maybe I don't want to share previous experience, uh, client experience. Uh, maybe I'm not interested in sharing their skills and expertise or their certifications. I can select or unselect those items and then go ahead and uh, click print. And then this ju just brings up a nice uh, print preview. If you wanted to have um, custom branding, maybe you wanted to have you know, a standard header that, that had um, your firm's logo and maybe your firm's um, primary location and, and, and maybe marketing contact information, we can add that to the headers as well. All right, so that was the, the quick demonstration. So now let's go ahead and go back into uh, the PowerPoint itself and start talking about um, what is coming in our, our winter release. Um, so I just demonstrated what's immediately available or available October 31st. Now let's talk about what we'll build immediately after that. So the first concept that we're introducing here is, is one of role-based profiles. What we've found is that depending upon the, the role within the firm, the sections that are applicable to that role uh, differ, whether slightly or significantly. An example might be if you wanted to use the firm directory for profiling um, your internal um, IT department, for example, the likelihood that they have bar admissions or court affiliations is obviously very, very low. So we want to, based on the person's role within the firm, um, control which sections show up uh, on the profile itself. So this allows you to control um, the layout of the profile. It also allows you to um, control visibility of certain sections. So we, we've received feedback that there's certain information like um, maybe home address information that we wanted to be able to um, collect in the firm directory but not show on one's public profile or their, their internally focused profile. So we're going to introduce that ability as well. So the end user has the opportunity to control what's visible on their profile. For those sections that are not required, things like bar admissions and court affiliations, obviously that will be on everyone's profile, but personal information can be hidden. So with that, I know that was a very, very brief um, description of, of um, role-based profiles, but I would like to um, ask you a particular question um, just to see if, if this is something that, that makes sense to your firm. So I have launched a poll, um, and that is basically, do you see value in role-based profiles in your firm? All right, good. Thank you for that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close that and make sure that I share my screen. Okay. Okay, so the next um, capability that we're um, uh, working on is this concept that we call questionnaires. So what this is, this is a, a role-based 
mechanism for periodically collecting information about experience and work within the firm. So what we're trying to address is uh, our, our profiles that become quickly outdated or stale or contain um, information that's not up to date based on, let's say, the last 12 months of working experience that a particular attorney has or a partner has. So what we want to do is have a very light touch, light touch from the end user's perspective and proactively ask them questions that increase the value of their profile. So an example of this um, could be uh, things like um, do you have experience in the following skills? So from a business development or from a marketing perspective, if there's a, a, a new topic that is very hot in the industry uh, and you want to quickly identify those folks that can help you, maybe with a go-to-market strategy, you can do that through this, this questionnaire's capability using an ad hoc questionnaire. You could also use it for scenarios where if you wanted to, if you had clients that, that want to ensure that your uh, bar admissions are, are active, for example, um, we've he heard feedback that some larger clients require that information, um, you can use this to proactively ask them, hey, is your South, Southern District of New York bar admissions still active, right? And so the next time they go to the profile, they can fill that information out. Also, if they haven't filled out information, things like industry experience. So do any of these uh, particular industries apply to you? We can get pretty sophisticated, or we're planning to allow you to get sophisticated um, with this capability so that uh, maybe we look at your uh, matter management system to determine if those have been classified based on industry experience. We can ask them, hey, we noticed that you worked on a particular matter, happens to be in a certain industry. Do you want to declare that you, know, that you have industry experience in media and entertainment? We also have the opportunity to create, um, as was mentioned previously, periodic um, or timed um, um, questionnaires, meaning in the last 12 months, have you done any volunteering or causes that you want to include on your profile? Also, we noticed that you haven't uh, specified any judge clerkships. Do you have any that you'd, you'd like to specify at this time? So it's really a, a proactive way to collect information without being overly um, invasive when people go to their profile. Um, but one of the features that we were thinking of adding in is kind of this notification center that's denoted by this, um, this number three here. So if there are three questions that have been asked of you, you can go to that notification center and, and uh, answer those particular questions. You know, Jason, one of the things, just going back to that example, um, that our, our folks are kind of keen on for this purpose are a couple things. One is when you bring in laterals or even existing partners that have been at the firm a long time, you often don't get uh, them to fill out, if you do have a form that asks them to fill this stuff out, you often don't get it all filled out, so you really have kind of that one moment in time to collect that information, and then if you don't get it, there's no easy way to have a second bite at the apple, and this allows for us to be able to do that on a, on a kind of programmatic basis. The other thing that we're using this for also is in instances where there's kind of an emerging trend in the legal marketplace, and we want to know you know, we want to add a skill, like inversions, for example, and then know who's got experience in that area. And it, certainly we could do that via email, but again, I wouldn't have a place to capture it and store it for future use. So this allows us to react to trends in the marketplace and, um, and try and tap into experience that we have in the firm uh, when we see opportunities to, um, to go out and proactively pitch, um, you know, our lawyers in new areas. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch another poll here um, and make sure I have the right one selected. Uh, this one comes up as, as profile questionnaire. So again, it's, it's formatted in the same manner of how valuable do you think that this, this feature would be um, uh, in your firm today. About 15 more seconds. All right, perfect. Thanks, everyone. All right, so let's go ahead and close that out. 
Okay, so moving on to the next major piece of capability, what we're doing right now, we have a very basic workflow um, capability inside of the firm directory. But what we're introducing here is that everything within the within the profile itself can be uh, either moderated or sent for approval. So an example would be for education experience. If someone declares that they went to Harvard, um, someone in HR should probably have the opportunity to um, to vet that. So anything within the profile has uh, this workflow attached to it where certain individuals have the authority to approve or reject particular content. There are some additional benefits here in that uh, marketing can use this as a notification system that um, they would ultimately update the public facing bio as well. So if you wanted to use the firm directory is kind of where the, the attorney or the, the partner can create their own bio and then submit that for approval to be published out to the public facing um, uh, bio. You can use that, that system or this system to, to accomplish that particular workflow as well. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a, another interactive poll. So this, this poll, again, is, is just talking about the approval workflow. And um, I think the way to, to think about this, would this provide value as it relates to your current understanding of the firm directory? So is, is uh, self-declaration something that, that is sensitive to you? Uh, meaning, do you want to ensure that all content in their profile has been vetted by someone? About five more seconds. Perfect. And as, you, as you're going through this, sorry, Jason, on the yeah, approval go ahead. piece, uh, I know a lot of times our marketing folks are also keen to approve um, changes to bios to ensure that what lawyers are saying <laughs> is, you know, not a stretch, I'll just say. And so there's a lot of other areas kind of like this where we want to validate that um, what people are putting in their bio is accurate. So we wanted, we wanted to have the option to selectively, you know, um, put in approval on certain fields, not necessarily the entire profile, but certain fields we wanted to be able to validate before it got published uh, and be available publicly. Yeah. Okay, so that was the, the winter release. Now we're going to, I'm going to pick up the pace just a little bit, make sure that we have time for questions. Um, but one, uh, capability that we're, we're thinking about right now is this concept of improving your profile. So very, very similar to questionnaires, but it's more of a collective set of, of ways that a profile could be improved. So if we're finding that, that people are, are interested in skill information and someone's profile doesn't have a, a certain number of skills, we'll ask them for uh, more interesting information related to that. Also, um, you'll notice here things like um, home phone where maybe PeopleSoft is the location that uh, the home phone information needs to be updated. What we want to do here is give you a, just a quick way to link out to that particular system. Now, it, it, it won't necessarily be, hey, here's the form where you change your, your, um, your phone number, but at least it will give them instructions on how to change that, that information that's stored in the back end system. So moving on um, for data integration, when, what we do today is we have um, a mechanism that we call a common data structure, where if you get all of this information into this common data structure, we have a technology that will pull that in and, and populate uh, people's profiles based on that information. Your data sources can be um, other databases. It can be maybe an experience database. It can be um, um, Excel spreadsheets. So once it, it's into that common data structure, we can pull that information is in. What we would like to do um, is we would like to have more first class support for um, some very specific uh, industry specific solutions, things like interaction, workday, and elite. Now, the, the, the systems that we choose are, are very much based on, on your feedback. Um, but these are the three that, we're, that, that are 
that we're planning right now. For this particular um, question to get your feedback, we're going to have a survey at the end because GoToMeeting didn't allow us to have um, this kind of multi-select that we wanted to do, or we ran out of polling questions actually. So if you could fill out the survey related to this at the end of the um, session, we'd really appreciate that. Next capability that we're thinking about is this concept that we call people pivot which is where when you go to someone's profile and um, you're looking and you see that they have a, a particular bar admission or maybe they went to Harvard, um, you could, for example, click on Harvard and, and a, a flyout would come in from the right-hand side that would show you all of the people that, are, um, uh, that, that have went to Harvard. Right? So it's just a really quick and easy way to find similar people within the firm itself. So this is much of a, very much a, a user experience type capability. We also were thinking that um, it might be nice to have a, a friends of the firm concept so that if um, you do a search result for inversions um, in Brazil, in the healthcare industry, um, um, Maybe, maybe the number of individuals that have that particular experience is limited, but you could create a profile for friends of the firm, so meaning firms that you have some type of a working relationship with that you can either A, delegate work with or, or, or assume some advice from that particular firm. So I think I might have a poll for this. No, I don't think I have a poll for that guy. So the next um, area that we're planning on focusing on is the ability to generate proposals based on the content within the firm directory. So this is an example of where when you do a, a search, there would be a, a button on the search result page that would say generate proposal. Now, what gets generated will dramatically change based on the, the, the firm. What, what's being demonstrated here is a PowerPoint presentation that um, has the leadership team for, um, for litigation, for example. And so really it's a time saver for creating pitch decks that um, pulls the, the relevant information from the firm directory, including their images and their core bio information, and formats it in a brand-specific um, PowerPoint presentation. We're also looking at potentially doing that in Word, um, but it, I'd be really interested to see, uh, based on your feedback, what, where the value is for this particular capability. So I'm going to go ahead and open a poll, and I'm not sure, Tom, if you had any um, um, input on this particular capability. Well, it's something that's sort of a natural extension of having, you know, all this information uh, stored in one location and if there was a way for you to you know, store other sort of content almost like a, a mini CMS I think that would be really interesting um, especially on the BD side which is really more and more where when you look at this tool there's certainly some KM aspects to it and there's also um, growing at least here at Cadwalder more and more interest in, in the, the BD focus and um, I, I you know, as a practical matter, the team that's running this project is um, mostly led by folks in BD that are keen on getting this um, put in place for all the league table submissions and lists and awards that we submit for in addition to the obvious KM benefit you get for experience. Uh, and they're, they're, we don't have a proposal generation tool right now, so it's something that we're actually evaluating as we speak, so this would be a nice feature for us to have. Perfect. And the final uh, roadmap item, uh, immediate roadmap item that is, is something that we call um, entity profiles um, or matter specific profiles or practice specific profiles. And the objective here is that we have this very rich firm directory that has um, information about people. But why shouldn't the same firm directory have rich information around your practice areas, around your locations, around specific matters? So the reason that we want to do this is we want to make the mobile experience much, much more valuable than just being able to find um, 
uh, people. So wouldn't it be nice if, if, you know, in your downtime, you're able to browse through a practice-specific page? Maybe you're new to the firm. Maybe um, uh, you're a recent lateral move. But in your downtime, you can go to your mobile device and you can read about the practice areas. You can find who the key, who the leadership team is. Um, you could find uh, who our key clients are, what our, our most active clients are. You could also do this for a, a particular matter. Um, so maybe as a matter closes, you want to profile that and, and, and come up with some key findings or some lessons learned or even identify who the team was on that particular um, uh, matter so that in the future, if, if you're working on a similar matter, you could go to that whole team. You know the whole team that participated in that, in that particular uh, matter. So again, concept here is that everything in the enterprise or in the firm should have a profile. Um, so with that very, very brief um, explanation, I want to go ahead and launch um, our final poll for the day, uh, which is asking you how valuable would it be uh, to your firm to be able to profile anything within, within the firm. All right, perfect. Well, thank you very much for participating in our polls. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Um, and now what what we want to do, I want to just reiterate that when you leave the meeting, um, don't do it just yet because we are going to do some Q&A, um, you'll be presented with this particular form that, that asks you about um, the integrations that you think would be valuable and whether or not you're interested in, in doing um, participating in a design review. The design review is a, is a similar concept except that it's a, it's a dialogue where we kind of lay down this is what we're planning on building and give you the opportunity to provide feedback. Um, changes, um, say if we're completely off the mark or if we're close, and really get your feedback into to how these features um, are completed. So please fill that out. It will be very valuable to us. So with that, I am going to go to the um, questions section, hopefully. Rachel, um, can you, are there some particular uh, questions that it looks like there are several. Are there some particular questions that were more? We do. We have a couple questions here. One is how is the mobile experience secure and is it cached in an offline mode? So it's secured um, through the protocols that you have in place. So meaning if you have two-factor authentication in place then we would support that. If you're happy with just uh, straight SSL type um, security we can do that as well. Um, is content cached in offline mode? The answer is, is no. It's all it's on the server itself. Um, so um, I hope that answers your question. There's no content that's that's offline. A second question was: Can we set up multiple BIOS for users? Yeah. So um, for that particular item, what we can do is we can create. Um, professional summaries for um, different, like for example in, in media and entertainment you might have a professional summary for someone uh, that's different than their, uh, their corporate um, experience. So the answer is yes, you can have multiple uh, bio sections. Can you print or have multiple, you address the multiple bios, but can you print or have multiple bios, one for each practice or industry? Uh, let me see, I'm gonna, can you say that one more time? I apologize. No problem. Can you print or have multiple bios, one for each practice or industry that you are in? Well, you can create multiple um, biography sections, um, but I, I think maybe what the question is is it's more specific to um, probably having a full, a totally different layout. Uh, and right now, that's a great what that issue. Is Jason uh -huh. that's for? lawyers that have experience in a few different areas and there's often a need to have bios that are sort of bespoke or tailored to that niche experience. So if I've got um, product liability litigation experience, class action experience, and some other experience, I might want to have three different bios that, that all derive content from one master bio, but I can show different versions of that bio to highlight experience in those niche areas more than others. Got it. Got it. Yeah, so that would probably be on that, that print screen where right now we just allow you to pick the, um, the sections. Maybe there are specific pieces of content that you would want to be able to select from as well. 
Jason, we have a question. Does the mobile experience work with good? Well, since I don't know what good is, I would say no. <laughs> uh, let me look up what good is and uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, and then we have the question, when is the target for more specifically for the winter update items? So we're shooting for December 15th, but based on um, your feedback and, and some design reviews that we do, we want to make sure that we hit the mark. Um, so we're looking for a December 15th. And that's all the questions that we've received. I wanted to thank everyone for joining us today and offer Tom and Jason the, the last words of the, the webinar and let everyone know that we will be sending out a copy of this webinar for you to share with your colleagues. Jason, Tom, final words. That's it. Thank you very much for joining. And, and Tom, I want to personally thank you very much for, for uh, joining the webinar today. No problem. Good job, Jason. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Um, if you've reviewed this and you, you, you have some insight or some feedback into um, what should be on the roadmap or, or, or comments on what are, what's currently planned for next year, please let us know. We really, really want your feedback. It's very valuable to us. So please reach out to us at pulseinfo at nudesic.com.